Hey everybody, Marcos Villegas here in Santa Monica with Peter Quillen, and we all know there's a fight going on. It's a, kind of a big deal, May 2nd, Floyd Mayweather versus Manny Pacquiao. And Peter, I wanted to ask you, when Mayweather gets in a stance like this, you as a fighter, what goes on through your head, and really how can someone counteract when someone shows up? You being from Detroit and probably being really familiar with something like that. I have to honestly say, nobody ever broke that code yet. Nobody yeah. knows how. Everybody assumes they know and what they do. They they, they figure that you can throw, hit, hit somebody here and mm -hmm. here and here like that. And what I've noticed, that even with the overhand rights by Mayweather dipping down, he's out of way from ranges for punches, and that's when he usually come back up with punches. Yeah. So it's like, it's kind of a rough thing to do. But what I figure, like Manny, he throws punches from every different angle. Mm -hmm. And being a softball, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Which, I, in my opinion, that Floyd always, you know, had a rough time with soft paws in the beginning, but he usually learned them and the just right away. But, you know, for me, Manny Pacquiao has great feet work and he got good hand speed. Mm -hmm. Mayweather has the same exact thing, but most importantly, Mayweather has great defense. And we all know that Manny Pacquiao usually struggles with boxers, but, you know, what Freddie told me once before, he don't understand how a guy throws the least punches wins the fight. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I think Manny throws a lot of punches, but I don't think it's not credible to say the guy that throws the most punches is about high end, um, landing the, the most punches, right? Mm -hmm. And higher, landing at a higher percentage rate. Floyd Mayweather is thrown over 50% and landing at 50% of his punches. So, you know, Manny Pacquiao also is one of those fighters that throws a lot of punches and land a lot. But, you know, for, in this case, it's going to be, you know, defense against the offense. So when he shells up, but what you're saying, it's really, and from what we've seen from people is, they try to hit him in the shoulder, try to hit him in the body, but it doesn't do any good. Yeah. He trains that so, way. So why is that? What, what is it about it when someone gets here that it's really impossible to penetrate? Because he takes away all the, 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 the it's, it's, four pun, it's four ways of the body. You got yeah. one, right? Mm -hmm. You got two, you got three, and a fourth. Yeah. The back, you don't hit. These yeah. three, you always use mm -hmm. to hit. But he closed the distance and he closed all the shows. So he showed up with everything. Yeah. But he used this. And then not only that, when you got to watch it, because he's like spinning, turning. turning. Oh, yeah, that's right. When you throw a shot. Yeah, so when you throw and you turn, no, you no. either turn, oh, turn or even when he's rolling. When he's yeah. rolling, boom, right? You come over. Yeah. You see, by this hand being here, mm -hmm. he's boom. Yeah. He's always open. See, you see, now my hand, I'm out of range from punch. Yeah. And then sometimes he yep. will go from there yep. to and tie you up. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, he just. All around smart fighter, so mm -hmm. you know what I mean. Like, I, I'm very inspired by watching him. Yeah, you know, I think a lot of fighters try to fight like that, but you know, only Mayweather can fight like Mayweather. Very true, very true. I'm from Michigan, so <laughs> yeah. if there's anybody got the right to be trying to fight like Mayweather. <laughs> you know, uh, in terms of cutting off the ring, I guess what would be the the right way to kind of keep that someone that's thing? like that against the ropes because you would think Manny would yeah. want to cut the ring and kind of keep him in a quadrant so he's not really able to move out. Well, you know, beat him to the steps and mm -hmm. assume where he's So we'll move back over here where the, there's a corner. Say you're Manny. So I, Manny gets him in this position. So obviously, if uh, Manny's here, Floyd's going to want to go this way, right, to get, right. To get out of the, right. the lead so straight. Manny would have to cut the ring. Yeah. The problem with that is Mayweather's you know, and Manny is, is, is well fast on his feet, but you don't want to ever get caught sleeping. So you don't want to be trying to focus on one thing, especially with a great fighter like Mayweather, where you trying to assume where he's going to be at and he's going to be there. But, and sometimes a fighter does that and he makes a mistake by being where he's supposed to be at and he's not there and mm -hmm. he's open for punches. So you always want to just be three step, think three steps behind, um, before a fighter can get there. Yeah. So if you assume, be ready there and be ready to shoot mm -hmm. punches. And you know, sometimes I think in the case of Mayweather, we still looking for the guy with the lucky punch to, to, to kind of um, beat him. Mm -hmm. And that's what we've been waiting on for years. Yeah, it hasn't happened. <laughs> yeah, hasn't. You, know, you hear a lot of fighters, you know, talk about, I got the Mayweather, they call it the- um, Mayweather, the, I got what it takes to break the Mayweather code. The code. Yeah. And um, we still haven't seen that, and he's been undefeated for what, how many, 40, 40 something fights? Yeah, 47. There's 47. been a few that have given him trouble. Uh, Mosley, Zab. Mosley, Zab, Chop Chop Cole. Yeah, uh, Castillo. Um, Castillo, in my opinion, it was like a total shutout. In yeah. my opinion, because- For who? But, um, I mean, Mayweather shut him out. The first fight? I mean, not Castillo. Fight? Then, you know, Castillo actually was a good, that was yeah, a lot of punches then. Yeah, shot. yeah. But then, you know. The um, second fight, yeah, it was a yeah, blowout. Yeah, 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 yeah completely, yeah. completely and I think, dominated him. I think it was the same thing with the Maidana fight. You know, it's The kinda, first one. It was kind of like. The first was, one, I didn't think 
that uh, it was should have. I think it was one of them. The cards was a draw. Right. I thought Maidana only won like four rounds, and then the first one. But and then what they do is with Mayweather, any controversy like that, Mayweather come back from the second fight and clear up yeah, the controversy. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, has done. a really good record of so rematches, and he and he does that, and he's done that previously before. I thought you were in um, Diego. Corrales. Oh, the Corrales. No, he blew out Corrales. He knocked him down like, like four I, or five times. That, that right there made me say, never put money against Floyd Mayweather. Yeah. Because he came to our school, and we, I asked him about that fight. And yeah. He, like, he said that, and God rest his soul, he said that maybe, um, he had to stop beating his wife at that time. It was the roughest thing you had to say to some oh, high schoolers. Man. But, you know, um, he went on to fight him. I yeah. thought Mayweather, at that time, I thought Mayweather and uh, um the Cuban, uh, Kesem, no, no, Kesem Kesem York. They was, no, they were they was in no. the same way. Yeah. It was kind of like prepping and grooming. Uh -huh. It never happened. And yeah. Like that. Oh, and, you know, um, for me, Mayweather, we still like. I'm saying it's like he's such a a good fighter. It's hard to know what to expect from him. He he put on good shows against Cotto and all these other fighters. He's been doing it from day one. And for me, where I'm from. I don't know no somebody that's been good at their job for more than 18 years. <laughs> that's a long time. 18 years having a job and being good at that and performing. Dude, at that. Random fact, I've had like 20 jobs and like the longest I've had a job was like, well this, what I'm doing right now is the longest I've ever had a job ever. I wonder, have you ever had any weird jobs? I mean, I'm a boxer. That's a weird enough job. <laughs> Outside of boxing, did you I have any? I, I killed chicken. Kill, like literally kill chicken. Yeah, I was like, like you snap their necks. I was, I you were a butcher. Mm -hmm. New York City was my first job where I had, was working in a lot of Vivero, where mm -hmm. you, I, I, you know, my dad was a butcher in Cuba for past time, and he owned a butcher shop. So I needed a job desperately, and I was like, I know how to do this. I know how to get. And you know, he put me to the test. I, I did it the Spanish way. He taught me how to like kill chickens they way and like, I, grab it right and they. No, I, Slice the neck. Every uh -huh. every religion and every culture like it's different, right? Different, like Spanish yeah. people. Where I learned, you know, they like to break the neck because they like the blood to stay in the neck. See that? That's what I, I'm familiar with. Yeah. Is the breaking the yeah, neck? Yeah, because the, like Spanish people like to keep the blood in the neck. Yeah, and we use that for like like gravy or pudding, like shit, pudding yeah. or something mm -hmm. like that. Now and like I'm not Muslim, so I wasn't allowed to kill a Muslim chicken. But they was letting me do it where I was. <laughs> but you know, they do a lot where they drain yeah. all the blood. And Jewish, they do it a different way too. You they have to be blessed, I think. They have to yeah. be blessed. You know, Muslims blessed, they, they meet as well. Mm -hmm. And then, um, uh, you know, Chinese people like a little hole. And, then they, and if you go to like Chinatown, uh -huh. I was doing a lot of the deliveries down there. And they always had the chicken with the heads on there. I didn't know why there was. And they, because they like to have the head on there. Yeah. So. That's my, I mean, my weirdest jobs I ever yeah. did. Yeah. Did you ever at, get grossed out cutting the animals? No, nah, man, I worked at Avalon. I seen my dad doing it, goats and all kind of stuff. Yeah. When I was little, so it was like it didn't bother me. Mm -hmm. But I worked at um, Vaveline as a, I used to change car oil and okay. I worked in a tire shop when I was younger. Actually, it was a tire shop that my dad sold to another Cuban, and I ended up getting a job there changing tires. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I, I did roofing. I did, I know I do vinyl siding. You know what I'm saying? I got, I'm surprised how your nickname didn't come out to be like Peter the Butcher Quillen because yeah, you were a, yeah. a butcher yeah, before. Man. You know, <laughs> that was like one of the hardest jobs. I, I, used to have, I used to have hay fever every day. No way. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. I was allergic to the plumage of the feathers. You know, the, um, they got like particles in feathers that used to get me really sick. Yeah. And I used to have to go train. And I'm, I'm getting sick thinking about it. Uh -huh. But <laughs> I can't believe those are my, my hardest days. I, that's why I figured like, man, People don't understand, man. I had a hard time, man, coming up. Mm -hmm. And people thought it was like, oh, you got people that do right by his career. I didn't get, I got out later in my career, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, my managers, they, you know, I had to make them believe. At that time, I had three jobs, working three jobs. I was working at a nonprofit organization at the time called Soy, called Service and I used when I was an administrative assistant. And then um, I was working at um, IHOP as a, a waiter. No way! You were know, I used to killing them, making a lot of money. I was a good waiter with a lot of personality. Yeah. And then um, I was also doing training, training people. So I was like back to back to back in going to the gym and working out. I cannot picture you serving pancakes yeah, to man. people. And when I quit, when it was time to like get rid of the job, I yeah. said, I'm gonna tell them, fuck their pancakes, fuck their eggs. <laughs> and um, I did it. Why, were you just so fed up or you never no, no, food? You know what I mean? It just is like such a hard thing. Yeah. And I, yeah. I always, they was talking to you. I don't like when people, I never like to feel small. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. why I try not to make nobody feel mm -hmm. small because I hate, the, I hate that feeling. 
and that job made me feel that way. And you start to see jealousy right away when you got a person, hello, how you doing today? My name is Peter, I'm gonna be your waiter today. If I can get you guys anything, can I get y'all guys anything to drink? Yeah, let me have a um, two large, a large orange. I said, you know what I'm gonna do for y'all? I'm gonna save y'all dollar today. I'm gonna get y'all a large carafe, which is two large um, orange juices anyway, and it's gonna save you a dollar. They like to save money, <laughs> yeah. and that's more money in your pocket. So. Peter, you're, you're a good Appreciate man. It, man. Thank, Thank you very you much. Here with Peter Quillen, Marcus Vegas here at Wild Card West, closing up this video.